We're back with the Humber Crew Mode Episode 2 today, where we'll be making the first signings of the series. And it's been a good start to the save so far. Halfway through Season 1, we're top 2 in Bundesliga 2, which, if standings hold, would see us automatically qualify for promotion to the Bundesliga. But what has perhaps been more impressive has been our run in the DFB Pokal. We're the last remaining non-Bundesliga club in the quarterfinals. It's a competition that has absolutely seen some upsets in the past. Maybe we can see another one in this save controlling Hamburg. But squad-wise, we're meeting expectations and in some cases surpassing what we had in mind. A few standouts for me has been Vuskovic, who I found out is on a two-season loan here at Hamburg, so we'll be continuing to get him regular playtime and ensuring that he stays at the club. Our homegrown talent, Krause, has established himself as one of the regular starters in the Hamburg squad. I'm not yet set what his final role will be in this save. I think it's between either a striker, center attacking mid, or winger. Kim is going to see the biggest rise to his rating, but I think it's very heavily dependent on some of the other players in the squad. But speaking of strikers, Vince Heimer has been the leading goal scorer. Didn't even start the season as our starting striker, but has continued to impress. So he'll now take over as our new number nine. But moving forward, I think the big focus for us in this January transfer window will be to sign some squad depth to make sure that we can see out the rest of the season, get promotion to the Bundesliga and keep building from there. Fortunately, we do have a player returning from a loan spell. It's Xavier Amici. He's another English player in this Hamburg squad and also a former member of Arsenal's Youth Academy. I am excited for his future. But speaking of the future, we will be bringing press conferences back for this series. This is something I used to do a lot in some of my previous career modes. I think this is a great way for me to interact with y'all just a little bit more, especially through some of the comments you all leave. And I wanted to highlight a few that I noticed from the first episode. Particularly, there were a lot of transfer rumors. I left things pretty open-ended where we could improve this team. But Andre Hahn stood out to me as a potential signing. He's had a few stints with Hamburg, including some time spent in their youth academy. But primarily, I consider him to be a veteran of the Bundesliga, has played for some well-established clubs. And even as he starts to get older, he continues to prove his worth. He just scored for Augsburg IRL against Bayern München, which was a huge victory for them. But in this save, he had his contract expiring at the end of the season. Now that we are in January, we can sign him on a free, which lines up well with our progress. If things hold true, True, and we can see promotion to the Bundesliga. I think that would be the perfect time for Han to arrive at the club, as I believe he is still Bundesliga quality. But with our first signing out of the way and still another one to make, I want to give a thank you for all the support shown on the first episode of this series. I know Hamburg is kind of a niche team to do a career mode around, but it's the sort of saves that I enjoy the most, and I'm glad that I'm able to even make this sort of content on YouTube and have it reach some people. If you could leave a like on the video and subscribe, it's a massive help to the channel. But let's get to the signing that y'all have been waiting for. With how well the current Hamburg team is performing, I don't think we need to make a huge signing here in January. Rather, I would like to invest in the future, bring in a young talent that we could hopefully build around in future seasons. And in my opinion, there are a few players with more potential in MLS than James Sands. You might be asking why I look at MLS, and there are a few reasons. First off, Bundesliga is one of the preferred destinations for a lot of these up and coming American and MLS talents. You all will know the Bundesliga is well known for establishing young players. Look at the likes of Jaden Sancho, Erling Haaland, the list goes on and on. But NYCFC have actually had a few players from their youth academy make the transfer to Bundesliga clubs and have turned into prominent players. Gio Reyna made the move from NYCFC's youth academy to Borussia Dortmund in July 2019. He then went on to make his Dortmund debut in January 2020 within six months. Another player is Joe Scally, who has really burst on the scene in 2021. But he actually had this transfer to Borussia Mönchengladbach agreed upon way back in late 2019, but the move was finalized this year. In my opinion, he's one of Mönchengladbach's best players, and I think he will play a role in the U.S. men's national team, especially as we look towards the World Cup in 2022 and 2026. I think the timing is right for Sands to make the transfer as the MLS season would have just came to an end in this save, and with him having ambitions to play in Europe, Hamburg is the right team for him to join. This signing was completed for his release clause of 5.6 million, and he may have even had a potential boost already in this save is he is showing great potential but i have a feeling that potential is going to go higher and higher especially if he can put in some good performances now the transfer window is open offers are starting to fly in for some of our players but i'm going to hold off on letting players go for now i'm not against letting players leave the club in fact it's something i'm going to try to do more in this save in order to reflect some realism maybe at the end of each season we'll let one player depart which in turn will leave room for a new player to come in maybe through our youth academy or through a new signing but some of these transfer offers were really interesting especially that for Ambrosius. 
He was linked with the Leeds United move in January 2021, and now Fulham are looking to bring him in. But I was previewing it in the last episode. We are going to see a couple promotions from our youth academy. The extra is not quite ready to see that call up to the first team, but we will see the promotion from Van Vick as well as Fuchs trying to send them out on loan straight away. And honestly, I overlooked this goalkeeper talent because he didn't have the highest overall rating, but he has an incredible name, Frank Frank. I think this is only the second time I've seen a Youth Academy player with a double name, and this is the first time I've had one with so much potential. But a quick look at some of the players that I have been able to send out on loan. It is still a struggle to loan list players and actually have offers accepted, but we were able to get four players out of the club, which will help see their potential go up. Establishing two new scouting networks, keeping our lower rated scout in Germany to look for any type of player, and I like this idea of establishing a network in Finland. I learned something new from the comment section every day, and y'all left some insights about Hamburg and its link to Finland, especially with some up and coming talents. The highest rated of which being Ansi Suhonen, who has made a lot of appearances for the club IRL, but unfortunately doesn't have the best rating in FIFA. I also believe he's one year older in FIFA than he should be, which is never a good thing as it gives us one less year to develop his attributes. But I'll see what I can do, maybe give him some in-game minutes as a substitute, and at at the very least send him out on loan next season but a look ahead at our first few fixtures in today's episode we have a derby match against St. Pauli, who I might remind you is in a battle with us for top of the table. Going into this match, we actually went one point above them, so win could see us go as much as four points clear. But at the start of February, we had that quarterfinal fixture in the day of Pay Pokal against Borussia Mönchengladbach. We've got all the makings for a great episode and hopefully a promotion push. But let's get into the gameplay and I'll catch up with y'all for an end of season recap. There are many derbies in German football. Most people will recall the Revere derby between Dortmund and Schalke and Der Klassiker between Bayern and Dortmund. But the Hamburger Stadt derby between Hamburg and St. Pauli is also significant. It's a cross-city match in Germany's second most populated city. Combine that with the storylines in this save where both sides are competing for promotion only amplifies how significant this match could be. And as we turn to these highlights, we certainly showed up to the occasion. Some sloppy play inside the box will lead to St. Pauli dispossessing the ball. It falls to Kinsombi, and what an effort from just outside the 18-yard box. Primarily a box-to-box -box midfielder that generates chances for our forwards. He does a good job to win back possession, and I believe he also nutmegs the defender on that effort. We had little intentions to stop there as Meffer does a good job to dribble around the slide-tackling St. Pauli player. Jota now playing the ball into Krause, patiently building up the attack. And again, it's Kinsombi in front of goal. It's a brace 13 minutes into this fixture. And on this ensuing free kick, we win the ball back right away. Vince Heimer waiting for the attacking support. Eventually, Kinzombi playing through Kitzel. He's been in these situations before. The five-star weak foot throws in a little bit of uncertainty for the goalkeeper, as this time he will be finishing that effort on the far post on that left foot of his. Krause with a great run to make things for 37 minutes in. And at this stage, I had to go ahead and check my gameplay sliders, make sure everything was still on default or even think back if I had somehow decreased the difficulty. But no, it was just a good match for us as Vince Heim with a burst of pace just before the halftime break is looking to make things five. There's two Sao Paulo defenders around him, but that won't matter as he will also go for the far post. Now I know five goals is a lot to be scoring and it makes me consider maybe adjusting some of the gameplay sliders or upping to ultimate difficulty, but I think primarily it was just a match where we were extremely clinical in front of goals, even the XG only expecting two goals from us in that first 45 minutes. Sometimes you just have to attribute it to getting your tactics right as we will make a debut for Sands 53 minutes in, so getting roughly 40 minutes or so and starting to slowly adjust to this Hamburg squad and tactics. St. Pauli weren't exactly giving up as they finally get an effort close to goal, narrowly wide of the post as Kitzel is subbed off and we're also going to feature Amici as he makes his return to the club. The Hamburg fans cheering us on, a great ambiance here for the Hamburger Stadt Darby. And we're trying to make it six. The ball fell really favorably for us and Amici actually tallying an assist to cap off a great performance. Keeping in mind that we have that quarterfinal fixture of the day of Bayport call coming up. This is exactly the sort of mentality I want to have from the squad. Some of our new signings even went on to impress me a lot. If I had to guess, I would not be expecting such a dominant result for us 
as we travel away to Borussia Park to take on Borussia Mönchengladbach. Not too many changes to their team. I believe that is Dries Mertens featuring for them as a left winger. So clearly they're going for an attacking lineup with this 3-4-2-1. I am still using the poke call as an opportunity to rotate our side as we have a lot of quality players to choose from. With that said, crucial players like Tim Leibold will need to lead by example. It's our new signing Sands that will get involved straight away as he works the ball out to the right. And this will also be the first time that we're debuting the away blue kits. I think I'm going to start using them more often as they really stand out, especially in contrast to the Mönchengladbach kits. But an ambitious attempt from Krause. He goes for the acrobatic finish. Unfortunately, not on target. That would have been quite the goal to score in the DFB poke call. Maybe he's got it in the back of his head that uh, some other Bundesliga competition are scouting his performances as he potentially thinks about his future. But what a cross there to find Kitzel as he heads it towards the far post. It's how we really like to utilize play with this 4-3-3 formation. I wouldn't consider myself someone that likes to cross the ball a lot, but with this tactic, we seem to be scoring a lot of goals. So we'll keep on doing so while that works out for us as Fernandez pulls off a good save from the Mönchengladbach effort needing to dive to his left and tip that effort to safety. We are still in the first half and this segment of build up is oddly similar to our first goal. Another cross sent in. This time it will be a volleyed effort by Kitzel. That partnership between Kitzel and Jatza, they seem to alternate between who sends the crosses and who scores the goals. I'm all for it because it allows us to not necessarily rely on a single player. As you start to rise to the ranks of German football, and I'm sure there will come a time when other Bundesliga clubs will try to sign some of our players, making sure we have a wide array of goal scorers will allow for more sustainability at the club. But a close effort there as we nearly allowed the own goal. But with a 2-0 lead and still just 35 minutes left to play, I decided to debut one of our other Youth Academy promotions, Van Wijk. Unfortunately, he was unable to get loans out. Fuchs, our German striker, was able to get loans. So we'll probably get an update on him next season. Some unfortunate build-up play to concede as it seemed like Wunsch and Gladbach were just passing between their players. Kind of sums up legendary difficulties sometimes. I will say for the most part, I have enjoyed gameplay in this series, especially with lower division career modes. But a good run here from Van Wijk, beating two Wunsch and Gladbach defenders. Had he been able to finish that, he may have earned himself a permanent spot on the bench to feature as a substitute. But some nervy moments, just 11 minutes remaining off the post. And back into play, Van Wijk again played through, showcasing some of his pace and passing ability. Really good ball to set up Leibold. Should have done better with that chance, but fortunately, we're still able to hang on to the 2-1 victory, putting us through to the semifinals of the DFB Pokal. Our opponents for said semifinal will be Wolfsburg, another club that I know a lot about in German football. Did a crew with them last FIFA. And to be fair, they're a team that is kind of rising through the ranks. They're in Champions League this season and achieved a top four finish in Bundesliga last year. It does help when they've signed Kurumo gems like Thiago Almada, the high potential Argentine winger slash center attacking mid. But I'm going to take this opportunity to showcase a player that is here on loan, but for whatever reason is a permanent part of our club. Tommy Doyle, the young Manchester City player who actually has a real face scan in game. With the amount of midfielders we have available to us at Hamburg, I don't see myself keeping Doyle in this team. I'll probably transfer list him next season or send him out on loan to see if he can fulfill a good amount of his potential, also reflecting some realism. But taking a look at how Wolfsburg have done, they've beaten some quality opponents to get here, including RB Leipzig. But another upset could be on the cards. Considering our good form, I wouldn't put a victory past us. But unlike previous opponents that might have undervalued our ability, I felt like Wolfsburg were ready for us as Almada opens up the scoring just 10 minutes in, bouncing off the crossbar and in. I felt like a lot of luck was on our side in the Munch and Gladbach match, like their efforts going off the post. So that kind of caught up with us here as Veghorst will play another pass to Amada. He is going to set up Gerhardt, who makes things to 18 minutes in. So a lead that we'll need to somehow break through. And that is always going to be more difficult with these legendary and ultimate difficulties. We do have a bit of fortune to again see a red card in the first half. It's Schlager with two yellow card offenses. To be fair, that second yellow card could have very well been a straight red. It will be imperative for us to at least get one goal before the halftime break. I feel like if we can cut the deficit in half, then we could make this match a lot more interesting. But we're very unfortunate not to get rewarded a goal from this bit of build to play. And to make matters worse, the ref is going to call play back 
as we do have an injured player on the pitch. It is one of our strikers and wingers, Yata, that went down on a hard Wolfsburg tackle. Our opponent certainly got ball in the end, but he's going to suffer a three-month injury, pretty much putting him out for the rest of the season. So again, we'll have to call upon Van Vick to make the impact out wide. We're just before the break in play with Mbabu running down that right wing. I don't know how we didn't manage the win back possession on multiple occasions there, but it will be three for Wolfsburg before the end of the first half. We were trying to cut thefts in half, and now in the end, we have made matters worse. Having to switch over to constant pressure tactics. I've seen comebacks like this happen before in previous career modes, like my Newcastle save. And to be fair, we do get one back right after the halftime break. It is race who gets the goal. I've seen a fair amount of comments asking me to feature race more often. Nice that he scores first goal for us. Somehow constant pressure tactics end up working better than our default defensive tactics. Even Baku getting through on goal is denied by Fernandez. It's really an all or nothing approach. You generate a lot of attacking opportunities, but also concede a fair amount of defensive chances. Not to mention it drains most of your players' stamina as we are forced into making another change. I believe I brought Doyle centrally and our homegrown talent Krause out wide. Krause will actually get involved in this attack. How do we score this goal on the near post past Castells? Would have changed the trajectory of this fixture, but right afterwards, Ambrosius forces a penalty. It was a pretty soft call, but Arnold did go down. So an opportunity for Wolfsburg to seal this fixture, despite us hanging around for the vast majority of this match. Waltschmidt will convert from the spot, making it four. Probably would have been fine to just switch back to our default defensive tactics, but I stayed on constant pressure and Almada. Utilizing that pace, we'll get inside the box. Could have squared it across, but it is Waltschmidt to get another goal. The impact sub for Wolfsburg. Kind of padding his stats tally, but it has been impressive for us to reach this far in the poke call. Again, we were the only non-Bundesliga club to reach the quarterfinals. We even went one stage further to the semis, and I'm not at all disappointed with how we go out. Immediately following our loss in the poke call, we have an opportunity to seal the Bundesliga 2 title. Still four fixtures remaining. Three points will do it, and considering Regensburg weren't even in the top eight, it was a pretty dominant performance. Both Winsheimer and Glatzel getting goals, leading us to the very next home fixture, which fortunately was against the top side in someone that I wanted to feature gameplay against, Hanover. Unfortunately, we won't be able to see Winsheimer in this match because he had a red card suspension, but Glatzel will need to fill in at striker and maybe prove that he can still be a player in this career mode. We know that we'll be in the Bundesliga next season, so each and every player in our squad will need to prove their worth and earn a spot in the starting 11. While my main motivation for playing this match was to see the trophy celebration, there is still a lot on the line for Hamburg as they try to secure promotion to go along with us. But what a way to start off the scoring. It's Amici showing that he can shine when given the opportunities, a long range effort. And to be fair, I feel like that's something that we're kind of missing with this Hamburg squad. A lot of our goals have been scored from both crosses and from close range as we nearly double our lead 26 minutes in. Continuing the dominance with Krause playing the pass to Kitzel. Just some quick passing play. In the end, it is blocked by Hanover. But from end to end, this team really is something special. And I'm excited to take our talents to the Bundesliga. Shortly after the break, though, Hanover do manage to get the equalizer. Felt like we might have had that covered as best we could. But it's a good effort in the end to Fernandez's far post. We're going to make the decision to take Latzel off. Wasn't super impressive in the first half and allow Krause to feature as a striker. After all, it is one of the roles we're considering him for in this Hamburg team. This segment of play is exactly why. Turns on the ball quickly, fires that on his five-star weak foot, and will once again give us the lead in this match. Tried celebrating with the rest of our teammates and manager, but a classy way to open up his scoring in this match and his first few minutes as a striker. We're trying to build off of that confidence as Kitzel plays Kraus with a long-range effort going off the top of the crossbar. Was not that far off, had Zeeler beat, but just couldn't find the back of the net. That was ultimately the final highlight as we will celebrate in front of the home fans. All in all, a very successful season in Bundesliga 2. I feel like we have a much better idea about both the strengths and weaknesses of this Hamburg team. And the signings that we've started to make will ensure that the club is able to see long-term success. But as mentioned earlier, I think there will be some turnover as we continue to receive more transfer offers for some of our star players. A lot of those decisions will come down to you, so make sure your opinion is heard in the comment section. But for now, let's celebrate Hamburg's return to the Bundesliga after five long years and a few close calls in Bundesliga 2. 
We ended up winning the league title with matches to spare, ultimately finishing 13 points clear of second place Schalke No Fear, who will be joining us in the Bundesliga next season. In the end, a fairly realistic league table. You've got some big name teams, the likes of Hanover finishing in third and going on to compete in the promotion playoff final. Freiburg did win that match on aggregate, so they'll keep their place in the Bundesliga next season. Hanover staying in Bundesliga too. It's worth noting that Bayern ended up winning the Bundesliga, but it was a fairly close contest with Dortmund and just three points behind them. This has to go down as one of the seasons with the most dominant individual performances. We had Winsheimer leading Bundesliga 2 in goals. Kinsombi getting into double digits for assists and also leading the league. Hoy Fernandez also had the most clean sheets, making a clean sweep of the top three statistics in Bundesliga 2. We, of course, saw an exit in the semifinal of the DFB Pokal to Wolfsburg, but it was Borussia Dortmund that won the Pokal this season. Liverpool picking up a Champions League final victory against Bayern, Europa League going to Manchester City this season, and Spurs winning the Europa Conference League. It's fairly self-explanatory, but Vince Heimer did also finish as the top goal scorer at the club. Despite his long-term injury, Yata still was tied for second most assists alongside Kitzel, with Kinsombi leading the club for assists, 11 from 32, both Krause and Kitzel had eight. But it was the story of Van Vick, especially for some of those gameplay substitute appearances. He saw a plus 10 in his rating. Granted, a lot of that came from the position change, but still continues to be one of the top prospects at the club. It's looking like Dijkstra might be a 70 rated player before he's eligible for promotion. Still just 15 years old, but we managed to secure a couple of other promising talents in our youth academy. We have Jonathan Meyer, a 17 year old center attacking mid at an overall of 65. And the top finish talent is Yuka Consta, a center defensive mid with an overall of 58. Also seems to be quite versatile with the four star skill move, five star weak foot set. And I believe that's the team player trait. We fell short on a couple of board objectives, but the main focus was the domestic success. Securing the automatic promotion to the Bundesliga, winning the league title, and reaching the later stages of the Pokal should leave us in a good shape for our 88 manager rating, assuming we can get some good objectives for next season. But here's a look at the Hamburg squad taking the step up to Germany's top division. We have to be somewhat careful about being too ambitious. The main aim has to be avoiding relegation next season. But over the years, there has been some clubs that took the Bundesliga by storm in their first season. RB Leipzig comes to mind, and even Union Berlin rising through the ranks, and within a few seasons, getting into European competitions. That's kind of the direction I want to take this Hamburg save, but I do want to thank channel members for supporting what we do here on YouTube. If you ever want to learn more about the membership program, go ahead and click the join button right underneath the video and unlock some exclusive perks of the channel. Feel free to drop some potential signings we can make in the comments section, but I think that's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you're new, but until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you all again soon.